بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين. A nice polite reminder for those who are talking loudly. جزاكم الله خير. We have a class. This is the third part of the commandment of the Prophet وسلم, which is to do with the defects of the tongue, in which we discussed in number one, the backbiting, and number two, we discussed the lying and the slandering. Now we're going to be talking about Shahadat al Zul, the testimony of falsehood. Azur in Arabic, it's a word used in beautifying something. And that is to make it look like, which is not the reality of it. So when the person, he makes the zwir, he basically falsify, he is enhancing, he's doing it in a way that it looks good, but maybe it's not as good. And shirk can enter in the tazwir or the zur, because the shirk, Wafism, is something that the people had made it good and look good to the people. So they made the haq batil, the truthful, to be truthful when it is falsehood. And also into that word, the singing, because the singing is in a way, or the music as well, make the person make it you know lawful for him to hear such a thing lying also can enter into that word azur because it beautifies for the person what to do it so that he will think or he make uh, things which are uh, haq but they are actually falsehood so this is the word zur the zur is in everything which is falsehood whether it is shirk polytheism lying or anything like this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had encompassed in the, the ayah of the Quran by saying about the believers and the slaves of Allah, describing them that they do not testify the zur. So zur, shirk, music, lying, all of that. So it is not going to be just specified for the falsehood testimony. And Allah azza wa he says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, kunu qawwamina bil qista, o you who believe, always try to uphold the right, shuhada'a lillah, witnesses for Allah, walau ala anfusikum, even if it should be against yourselves, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, wa aimu Allah, by Allah, if Fatima is to steal, I will cut off her head. So you have to be Saying the haq, even if it's against yourself. Even if it is to do with the parents, then you have to say the haq. Or those who are next of kin. If it is to be, they are rich, or to be, uh, he is to be poor, Allah Azza wa Jal will look after them, so do not follow their desires. And ta'dilu, so you don't be just when tell how to do. But if you twist and reject, Allah Azza wa Jalla, in Allah kana bima ta'amaluna khabira, Allah is acquainted of what you do. Also, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Ya ayyuha al-Jina amanu kunu qawwamina bil qisli shuhada. Kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada. Also, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Be a standing for the haq shuhada bil qisli. Testimony with truthfulness. And let not the hatred of people make you to not to be just. Because you hate them, then you rule injustly or unjustly. Be just and it is closer to the haq. Fear Allah, for Allah is acquainted of what you do. Allah will also, he says, the ones who do not testify the falsehood, those are the description of the believers. If they pass by the idle speech, they will not even bother. Also, Allah said, Do not hide the testimony. 
if it is needed. If he does hide it, then his heart will be sin. Also, Allah said, إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا and do not say of what you have no knowledge of the hearing and the seeing and the heart all of that you are in charge of also Allah do he also the scholars regarding this this word وأن تقول على الله ما لا تعلمون that is you don't say upon Allah what you don't know this is to prohibit to say anything in the deen without you are having no certainty you're not sure of also, Prophet he said, Shall I inform you of the major of the sins, of the major of the major sins? They, he three times asked, and the companion said, Yes, Messenger Allah. Every time he asked, the companion would reply, Yes, Messenger Allah. He said, To make shirk in Allah Azza wa And number two, to be undutiful to your parents. And number three, and he was leaning, and then he sat down and he kept saying, Allah wa qawlu zur Verily, the saying of the falsehood testimony kept repeating it until the companion, they said, later who sakat. We wish that he could just stop as of sympathy to the Prophet of Allah. And Imam al-Bukhari, he had made a chapter in Sahih. And that is in the chapter, he said, what is being narrated regarding the testimony of falsehood. And then he quotes Allah Azza wa Jal saying, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ The ones who do not have a testimony with falsehood. And also, and hiding the falsehood. No, sorry, hiding the testimony. Allah really said, الشَّهَادَ Do not hide the testimony. And also, Imam al-Bukhari, he had made a chapter in his Sahih, says, you should not make a testimony on something which is not good or something which is vulm, oppression. If you to be testifying, don't testify on something which is zulm. And then he quotes the hadith of Al-Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhuma. Al-Nu'man, he was a young little boy. He says, father, he was asked by my mother, and that is Amra bintu Rawaha. She's the sister of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. She was asking her husband, which is the father of Al-Nu'man, to give me or to grant me something like a special gift. So until after one year of nagging on his head, he accepted to give something to me. And she said, verily, when he had gifted that to him, it could be a slave, it could be a lamb. Um, she said, I'm not gonna accept until you make the prophet of Allah is the witness for that. So you don't change a word and know if it's halal or not. So he took hold of my hand and I was a boy. In another narration, he put me in my shoulder, put me in his shoulder. And then he brought me to the Prophet. And he said, Very, the mother of this boy, bin Rawaha, um, she had asked me about a gift for this boy. So I have gifted him, and I want you to be a witness. So the Prophet of Allah asked, Do you have another child, son, apart from them? Do you have another child apart from him? He said, Yes. He said, well, did you give him the sign? He said, no. He said, well, don't make me a witness on something which is oppression. I don't testify. I don't become a witness on something which is injustice. Prophet he said, the best of the people are the generation that lived with me. Then the ones after, then the ones after. Then after that, there will be people coming whom their testimony precedes their oath. And his oath will precede his testimony. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that means these people will, before they make an oath, they testify. Having been asked to testify. Or before they, they've been asked to testify, they make an oath. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, verily, after you, O companion, there will be people, yakhunun, they will betray, walaytamanun. And they cannot be entrusted. They will testify and be a witness, but they will not be asked to be a witness. And and they give a vow, yet they don't fulfill that vow. They become like obese, uh, more than like obese. They don't really care about. So this, this is an indication of 
too much food and too much luxury. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma, he said a man, a Bedouin, came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Messenger of Allah, what are the kaba'a, the greedy sins? He said to him, to make shirk in Allah. He said, then what? He said, to be undutiful to your parents. He said, then what? And he said, al yamin al-Ghamus, the dipping oath. He said, what is this Ghamus dipping oath? He said, the one whom with this oath, he will take a share from the Muslim brother, yet he's a liar. So this Yameen al-Ghamus is called al-Ghamus because it dips you into the hellfire. It dips you into the sin, and the sin will dip you to the hellfire. And there is no expiation for such an oath. Because an oath which is not being done. See, when you say, by Allah, I'm going to Manchester, and say, okay, I don't want to go to Manchester, then you have to pay expiation by feeding them poor people or clothing them poor people or fasting three days if you haven't. This one is, there is no kafara for it. There's no expiation. And if there is no kafara, it is a very serious matter. Because if you have a kafara, alhamdulillah, expiate, expiate. But this one is like you're saying something which is in the past. By Allah, he has done it. By Allah, he took it. By Allah, it is to something which is in the past. Number two, it is something to take something from other people or to claim something from other people, or that this this does not belong to such and such. Thirdly, it will be unjust, lying. So you're lying in it. This is the dipping oath. So you've got these three conditions. And then it becomes a dipping. So in the past, and taking the right of somebody, or claiming the right of somebody, or thirdly, it will be, well, a lie. It's not correct. Abu Hurairah, he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ زُورُ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلِ he who does not abandon the three things here, the saying of the falsehood testimony and the implementation of it and ignorance, there is no need for him. Allah has got no need for him to fast, to abandon his food, abstain from that need of drink. I mean, there's no need for you to fast. If you're not fast from the haram, why should you fast? And also, we find that Allah has in a number of uh, Quranic text and number of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the reason why the testimony of falsehood is to be haram because it is a reason to make the haq falsehood and also he had forbidden to conceal it so if you have a testimony and it will save that person who's under oppression from his oppression and you hide it you don't say it again it, this is a reason for making the haq baatan truthful to be also, or the falsehood to be hat. So be careful. So if you have a testimony, you need to do it, then you must do it. And if you do it, you have to be truthful in it. What does it entail if a person had made a falsehood testimony? Number one, you will misguide the judge, and the judge will not rule in the right manner. Because, you see, ruling in Islam depends upon the following. The proof is to be presented by the person who claims. And if he hasn't got the proof, then the one who does deny, then he will make an oath. So if he made an oath, which is a falsehood oath, then he's misguided the court. He misled the court. So, so if I said, for example, this laptop, okay, uh, or somebody else. He said, this laptop is his and it's mine. So if he has claimed that this laptop is his, he has to present a proof, like a, a receipt, like a video camera when he bought it, like, you know, he's got all witnesses to say that he has, you know, bought this laptop. If, if this, no, he does not present that, then it is me, upon me to say, well, the oath, to by Allah, it is mine. So if it's not mine, then I have claimed something which is not mine. And that it was misleading the court. Number two, that you will be making oppression bull to the one you have testified for him wrongly. Because you have given him a portion which does not belong to him. And that is why it will entail for you the helper. Prophet ﷺ, he said, You are coming with your dispute to me, to judge me in between you. And some of you can have some better words than the other. 
It's like he's being trained like a solicitor. In the solicitor, they lie. Okay? So he, he's doing good words. You can just, with your words, twist the hack to make it yours. If I rule because of that twisted word of yours, that is, I have ruled that this belongs to such and such according to your testimony, I'm giving him a piece of hell, a fire. Let him not to, set, to take it. So if the Prophet of Allah had ruled to, to say that this thing belongs to that according to your testimony, which is falsehood, it doesn't make it halal for you to take it. Because it is based upon the judgment, upon this falsehood testimony. So the Prophet are ruling that it's your, it doesn't make it halal, because you rule because of your words, much more convincing than the words of the other. And the Prophet of Allah is a human being. He might judge for you, and it's not yours. So if he judged for you, it doesn't make it halal. The Prophet gave it to me. No, he judged because of your words. So he will like giving a piece of help. Up. And also it entails when you make a false testimony, oppression to the one whom you have testified against. First one you testified for, and the ones who testified against, because you have taken money which does not you know belong to you with this false testimony. And this person who is testified lyingly, he will be exposing himself to the supplication of this person who's under oppression. And the Prophet said, he said. I'm asking the brothers who are talking in the back, please. Three people whom their supplication will not be returned back. That means it will be accepted. Three supplication will not be rejected. It will be fulfilled. The person who fasts until he breaks his fast. Well, Imam al the just ruler. The third one, and the supplication of the person who's under oppression. This supplication, Allah will make it to be raised and lifted up on top of the clouds. And also he will open for it the gates of the heavens. And then the Rabb will address that supplication. Verily, by my might, by my glory, I will respond to you, even if it's going to be after a while. So Allah is going to look at that supplication and say, by my might, by my glory, by my honor, by my ex being exalted, that I'm going to give and respond and fulfill this supplication. So to be careful, if you may, a false testimony against somebody, uh, in order to take something which is not your due, due right, then the Prophet said, He who does take a portion from the right of his brother, something which is not his, Allah will make the helper his destiny and will make paradise to be prohibited upon him. He said, Messenger of Allah, a man, he said, Messenger of Allah. Shay'an yasira. Even if it is something little, let's say he wronged him and by falsehood testimony, he took something which is insignificant and not much. I mean, that can entail for him the hellfire, the tribe of paradise. He said, min Even if it is to be the siwak, you know, a little siwak made of the wood, doesn't cost you 50, 50 pence, 30 pence, 20 pence, maybe you got it for free. Even if you took it back with that zulm, you're going to be full, you're going to be having yourself. Uh, 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 exposed to the hellfire and deprived from paradise. Something really you have to understand. Also, the falsehood testimony, it will make those who are criminals exempted from the punishment. Because if you false false testimony, uh, the criminals will get away with their crimes. And that's an encouragement. The person will make a crime, be careful. Don't worry about somebody to testify for me falsely. Possibly. No problem. I've got somebody to back me up. I've got a witness to say I haven't done it. So the whole justice system will be shaken. And also, on this falsehood testimonies, the lots of things will take place. Either the violation will be inviolated, and the inviolables will be inviolated, or people will be killed, or people will be robbed, or money will be devoured falsely or forcefully, and there will be chaos in the system. 
And that is why it is important that is to understand also testimony is not just from the major sins, but also it's a devastating thing to do and devastating things will be entailed if it's been done. Um, when you make the false testimony, you are giving tezkiah, you know, you're giving like purification, something to elevate that person you have given, you know, testimony for. And also you have basically in humiliated a person whom unjustly been humiliated because of the falsehood testimony. Fine. Allah he says, Do not say what your tongue describes as lying. This is halal and this is haram. In order to forge a lie against Allah, the ones who forge a lie against Allah, they will never be successful. And how many false testimonies these days we have? Allahu uh, Alam. Too many. And which is more even dangerous than them, than them, the one hide their testimony when it's needed. And they know with the haq, but they don't want to speak. Uh, we say in Arabic, it's not a hadith, it's the same. The one who does not speak out the truth is like a shaitan, a devil who is uh, who is dumb, does not speak. Does not speak, he's dumb, deaf and dumb. So this is a shaitan. So if you have got a testimony by which you will exonerate your brother from being accused of such and such, you cannot hide it. You have to say it, cannot conceal it. Now we come into another disease from the defects of the tongues, and that is Al-Qadf. Al-Qadf is the translation of its defamation. Accusing somebody of Al-Fahisha, fornication, something that he has done. And the Qadf is from the word Qadafa. You, you throw something, and it's to do with the, with the stones. Qadafa, Qadafa al-Hijara. He had thrown the stones, Qadafa. And in the, the, the Sharia linguistic or Sharia terminology, I should say, it is actually to accuse a man or a woman in their earth, in their honor, that, that they have done something which is shameful, whether it's a man or a woman. But usually it's the case, the woman is more punishable in the Muslim uh, uh, in the Muslim society. That means if you defame a woman, it's more of a punishable than defaming a man. Because defaming a woman entails that there will be a woman who is, uh, for example, pregnant her, or that this child is not belonging to her. So that is why Islam had emphasized the importance of the punishment of such a thing. So Allah really says it. The ones who defame, those who are chaste women. Yarmun means they accuse them of fornication. They don't bring four witnesses. You have to bring four witnesses. Is him, is it him included in the witnesses or not? Allah alam, yes. So he's himself and three beside him. Himself and three beside him. So four witnesses. Majriduhum thamanina jalla. Lash them 80 lashes. Not only that. Wala taqbalu lahum shahada. Abadat. Do not accept from them any testimony after that. So they will be defamed forever. That's it. Some of us call it a different. How long? Is it if they tell that it can be, for example, later on to be a, a, a witness? No. Some of us call it no. It's forever. Because we say, Wala taqbalu lahum shahada abadat. Alas. No testimony will be accepted from them. These are the rebellious. Also, Allah already said, as for the husband who accused their wives, and the ones who define their wives to do the fornication. And they don't have witnesses, except for themselves. They themselves believe that they have done it. Either they caught them red hand at all, they know that you know they believe that their wives are not chaste. Here, for shahada to ahadihim al ma'u shahadat billah in Abu Lamina Sadiqi. Then his testimony is equivalent to four testimonies. You see, this ayah was revealed because of one of the companions 
who was so jealous. And this man, if he divorces his wife, no other companions will marry her. Because he's scared of that person. His ex-wife, it will be ex forever. <laughs> okay, his ex-wife will be ex forever. Nobody will marry her. He's scared because he's jealous. Even she's ex-wife, he will not let anybody. So when this ayah, the first one which I read, uh, uh, quoted, the ones who accused the chaste women, with fornication, they let them bring four witnesses. He said, Messenger of Allah, if I see my wife with a man and he's fornicating with her, I'm going to go and get four witnesses, three beside me to go look at it, and then it's okay. He says, Yes. Said, messenger of Allah, before that, I'm going to just kill him with my sword. I can't really have a, I'm not going to be waiting. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna hit him with the sword, gun, with the edge which is sharp, not the one which is the other one, not, not with the, not with the, sorry, not with the flat one, with the edge. I'm gonna kill him. That's it. It's finished. He said to him that this is the ayah, common metaphorism of ayah of the Quran, and then he left. The companion said, "Messenger, Allah, don't get upset with him because he's a very jealous man. For very, if he divorces a wife, we don't marry him because of his jealousy." That's it. So jealous. So very least, said the Prophet to Allah, but I am more than jealous than him, more passionate than him, and Allah is, is more than jealous than all of us. Then this ayah was revealed, which is Surah Al-Nur, verse 6 to 9. So the verse which is number 4 is Surah Al-Nur, then the following yeah. aswajahu, The ones who defame their wives, they don't have witnesses except for themselves. That his testimony is equivalent to four. والخامسة, and the fifth one, Allah Curse of Allah is upon him if he's to be from the land. If she wants not to be punished by stoning to death after her husband testified four times in front of the judge. One, two, three, four. And then the judge will stop him. So the fifth one will incur the curse and the punishment. The curse upon you, dear Allah, and the punishment of your, on your wife, which is the stoning to death. So if he made the fifth one, say, <laughs> then the woman to save herself from the punishment, she has to make another four encountering testimonies. to say, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Allah, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. And then the fifth one, uh, the judge will stop her. To say that the fifth one is the one that will make you exempted from the punishment. You don't say the fifth one. And the fifth one, he says, And that is the, the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah is upon her in Canaan, if he was her husband, to be truthful, accusing her of fornication. Allah he said, The ones who have Accused the women who are chaste. Rafila, they're not aware of what is taking place. They're being cursed in the dunya and the akhirah, and they will have a severe punishment. That is, on the day when all of these will be testimony or testifying against them, their tongues and their hands and their legs of what they wish to do. That is, Allah Azza wa will give them what they deserve. And they will know that Allah Azza wa is the truth. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ Those are the ones who have made the forged lie against Aisha رضي الله عنها. لَا تَحْسَبُهُ شَغَرْ لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ Don't think that it's good, no good for you, evil for you. But it's good for you. لِكُلِّ مِرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ Each one who has said it, he will have uh, accordingly the sin. The, the one who had four, made this false line, which is Abdullah ibn Ubaidi Salud, the hypocrite, And the, the forged lie against Aisha is an amazing story, and we don't have time to read this one. It's a big one, but I would say that a lot of lessons to be learned from that one. Inshallah, we'll make maybe one class just to do with this. Haridatul Ifq, the Ifq story. Abu Hurairah, he narrated the Prophet, he said, Ishtanibu Sab'a Mubiqa. Be aware and avoid those seven destroyers. What are they, Messenger of Allah? He, one of them, he said, Qal wa Qadhaf. 
المحصنات المؤمنات الغافلات to define the chaste believing women who are unaware I mean they are not really they are innocent women they don't really know what is happening what is around them also Abdullah ibn Umar he said that the Prophet وسلم, he said in Mina do you know which day is this day this is Allah wa Allah is messenger knows best they thought he's going to name that day with a different day this is the day of Arafah he said قال فإن هذا يوم حرام in Mina he said this is the day which is a sacred day but you don't know which city it is they know what is the city but they thought maybe the Prophet Allah name it was something else Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam Allah is messenger knows best he said Balad haram sacred town which is Mecca atadruna ma hada shahr Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam he said this shahr haram shahr al hijjah fa inna Allah haram alaykum dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum Allah had made prohibited upon you that is the following between each other, your blood not to shed the blood of each other, your wealth not to devour the wealth of each other, also me. And your guna, Mr. which is to defame somebody with shameful acts. Just like the sacredness of this day, the sacredness of this month, the sacredness of this city. Abdu Hajar rahimahullah he says that this irdu is the place where the person can defame or praise. Or with the praising of this and the defaming of this, the ilm, which is to do with not just himself or his wealth, it's more than that, it encompasses his wife and his children and his family. Ilm. Okay. Abu Hurairah said, Kullu Muslim. Rasul, he said, All of the Muslim to the Muslim is to be sacred. His blood, he emphasizes, and his wealth and his ilm. Also, the Prophet Sallam, he said, He who had accused his slave. Of fornication, yet he's innocent of that. He will be lashed in the day of resurrection. He will be lashed in the day of resurrection, like this master, except if he was true. It means he had accused him with true thing. But now this is the second option called al qalf al qalf they said, even if you accuse the man, the same thing. If you accuse the man, you have to yourself be punished with, according to the uh, basically the. The leader will, will uh, do, but always the verses and the ayat and the always are on the women because the women they are the most you could say vulnerable uh, uh, member of the society. And if they to be accused, there will be a lot of chaos in the society. Coming to the now to another information of the tongue, and that is the quarrels and argumentation. Quarrels and argumentations. And the quarrels and argumentations here, we say that argumentations is of two types. One, which is the one that we're not going to discuss, and that is the praiseworthy, which is every argument that led to the haq. And it is with intention not to be the winner, no, to be the person who is one to make the haq to reach the other side. So that is the jidal bil haq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had spoke about this, Argumentation. He said, "Udru ila sabili Rabbi kami al hikmati wal mawhida al hasana wajadilhu billati hi ahsan." Call the path of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching, and argue with them, reason with them in the best of ways. Also, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Wala tujadilu ahl kitabi illa billati hi ahsan illa ladhi ma darabu min." That is, do not argue with the people of the book except with the good way, good reasoning. You're trying to tell them what is the haq. So it's like a debate in a good way. So this is the one who is debating and arguing with knowledge, with expertise, with the intention of not to be the winner, as it's not a wrestling match, to make the haq to be reached to the other person. Okay? So in a way, with a nice way, with not viciousness, okay, with calmness. This is how the person can really make this word to really transfer to the other side with calmness, not uh, even on the expense sometimes on your, maybe on your expense of yourself. Maybe you're going to be in the, in the course of doing this, you're going to be insulted. You're going to be called something which is no good. You suppress this and you be patient and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you inshallah. Second type of argumentation is the one I'm going to talk about is the argumentation of the criticized one. 
the one which is no good, which is the one is that you don't really arrive to the haq, but you arrive to the battle. And the one which has been done with no knowledge. Imagine that you are arguing in the religion with somebody who has got no knowledge. Allah understand. Today I had something like this. A person who hasn't spoken for me for years. At least a year. Then he sends me a message about the situation. This, And then he says about... He had defamed the whole Salafi manhaj. And I was trying to... Nice way to do it. He said, don't talk to me. And he just... Uh, he blocked me. <laughs> just in a nice way, talking to the person. That's, that's called Jidan. He wants to win. And he's ignorant. He's got no knowledge in the deen. So imagine, we, we as Muslims, we don't really argue with the doctor when he gives us his prescription, do we? We always argue with the doctor of the heart, <laughs> which is the scholar. And he has got no knowledge. We say to the scholar, he doesn't understand what is running on in the current situation. He doesn't understand. He doesn't live in Palestine. He doesn't live in Gaza. That's why he doesn't understand. When it comes to the medicine, he will accept the medicine if he's coming from a doctor from a, uh, the other side of the globe. He will accept it. He, even he doesn't know. Of course, he's got a doctor there. But he doesn't know. He's got D in front of it. That's it. DR. But that knowledge of the scholar, he's no. No, no, no. These people, they've gone. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about. There are some people who argue in the deen, in the deen, with no knowledge. And he will follow every shaytan. It's written upon him that he will be misguided and he will be guided to the hellfire. Also another verse. Some of them they argue in the deen with no knowledge, no guidance, not even a true Quran or Sunnah. That is, he's folding his uh, his cloak is a sign of arrogance. Folding his cloak in order to misguide people from the path of Allah. He will have disgrace in this dunya. And he will make him to taste the punishment of the fire on the day of resurrection. Allah really spoke about the kuffar. This is the way that they are arguing with the Prophet ﷺ. Those disbelievers, they always argue in falsehood. In order to put the haq, the truth, down. And they've taken my ayat, my, my signs, and whatever they've been warned as huzur. Something like they take the mick. Allah Azza wa he said in the Quran regarding the hajj, فَلَا رَخَتَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجْ no indecency, no fornications or shameful acts, and no jidal. Jidalia is the one which you have bothered. But the jidal haq is no problem. So if you have with somebody uh, debating a point regarding something to do with the pillars of ihram, and this person is, you know, he doesn't understand, and you are debating with him, not to the extent of argumentation where that person is not knowledgeable, he's just arguing with no knowledge, if he's not that knowledgeable and arguing, leave him. That is the one that he should possibly be left in the hajj. But it's a debatable point, which is where student knowledge, student knowledge, he understands, and it takes no problem to make argumentation with him in order to arrive to what is the haqq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not learn the knowledge. لا تعلم العلم لتباه به العلماء In order to boast before the scholars about him. I'm a scholar. Not also to argue with those who are having no knowledge. And do not just make this knowledge of yours is in order to be the person who is running the show. If you are sitting in a place, oh, people turn their fingers on to you. He who does this, hellfire, hellfire. Hellfire. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had guaranteed for a person who had left the argumentation in Babel for the sake of Allah, that he will give him a house in paradise, in the best location. Ana Sa'eed, bi-baytin fi rabadil jannah. 
I am a guarantee a house in the best place of Jannah. The one who left this falsehood argumentation, even he was truthful, even he was upon the hub. And also a house in the middle of the Jannah. The one who leaves and forsakes the lying, even if it's to be joking. And a house in the highest point of Jannah, the one who has good manners. What does the person make him? What is these things that makes the person involved into quarreling and also into falsehood argumentations? What are the things? Number one, as I said, which is the ayah. This is the arrogance. And conceited, you know, person conceited thinks that he's, he's the one. Arrogance, uh, pride, that makes the person, you know, all the time arguing in battle because he doesn't want his pride to go down. If he had surrendered to the argumentation, his pride will be gone. That's what he thinks. Secondly, that this person he wants to show that he is knowledgeable, so he argues. And thirdly, that is. He will try to, the reason is to expose the defects uh, of that person and to harm that person on the side, on the other person. That's why he argues. He wants to harm him and put him down. And the, the only cure for this is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put himself down and humble himself. And... Uh, and to tackle the reasons that made him to, you know, demise that person and put him down. Just look, what is the reason? So this, this quarreling uh, leads us or leads us to split between the brothers. And this is what we're going to be talking about. Allah Azza wa Jal and his Prophet them had pointed out those people who always argue and they go haywire on the argumentation. Qal, Four things, if a person have them, uh, he would be hypocrite purely. And if you got one of them, it's got a character, a character of the hypocrisy. One of them says, if he is to dispute by argumentation with somebody, Fajr, he will be going outside his morale. He will be immoral. He will start swearing. He will start you know, doing things that you've never seen him doing, quarrel. And he will do things that he knows is partly just to prove that he's correct. He will do things that he knows is wrong. But because of this, I want to defeat him regardless. I want to, okay? So let's say the other side is saying, okay, I said to the other side, for example, today, Yahi, for Allah may Allah forgive for me. And he, he said, may Allah forgive for you. He said, <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah forgive for you on your own. Man. Okay, Allah may forgive for me. <laughs> so when I say may Allah forgive for you, that means you're wrong. Why are you I'm just saying may Allah forgive for me and for you? So for you only. Ida khasama fajr al jahil jahil ignorance. That's what it is. This is the hypocrisy. Some of the people whom you love, what they say in this dunya. And he will make Allah to be a witness of what is in his heart. Allah, Allah will do it in my heart. Yet he is one of the worst people you could really have a quarrel with these people with him. If he had left, if he's left, he will spread mischief and corruption in the land and ruin everything. Allah does not love the one who spread mischief. If it's been said to him, he will have the pride of sinning. He, Why should I I'm not going to be you know, No, no, I'm not going to be taqillah. You taqillah. You taqillah. That's what happens. Allah Enough will suffice for him, his helper, and what an, uh, an evil abode.
Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna shaytana aysa an yu'abada fi jazirat al-Arab. Shaytan has given up to be worshipped as a god in the Arabian Peninsula. Walakin fi tahrishi baynahum. But he was successful in putting what? Enmity in between them. Hatred between them. Quarrel, malice between them. Grudge. That makes them to uh, fight one another. Muslims are being killed in Gaza. And Muslims now, they're killing their hearts with each other by dispute. You block a person who is a brother of yours, whom you had a brotherhood for a long, long time, just for a simple word, have husn of one, yeah. Good, good opinion about it. That's a very important thing. You have a good opinion. But when the heart is being charged, everything that the other person on the side says something, you will interpret it in the wrong way. In the wrong uh, way, wrong intention. Because already your heart has been charged. Hatred, malice. So, Allah maghfir li wa la. No, maghfir la kid. And I forgive you, you're wrong. Tayyip. Abu Hurairah writes, listen to this hadith. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah, Allah, you will get hates. Kulla ja'dari. What is the meaning of ja'dari? Ja'dari is arrogant. Arrogant. The camper. Uh, Jawal. Jawal is the one does not, you know, listen. He prevents himself to listen. Jawal is the one who is stubborn. Sahab fil aswab. In Allah yubhidu. Kulla ja'bari in jawal in sahab fil aswab. The person who just makes noise, shouts. You know, when you talk to him, he shouts. He's like the one who was in the market, fish market. Exactly. Sahabim bil aswab. Jifatim bil layl. In the night, he's like a dead man. Jifa. Qal himaru bin nahr. And he's a donkey in the day. Subhanallah. Allah was ta'ala. So he's jifa during the night. And he's himaru bin nahar. And he's donkey in the day. Alimi. The amr in dunya. Only knows about the dunya. Jahili. The amr in akhirah. Not knowing the Akhirah. This hadith, our Shaykh al-Bani, makes it authentic. Sister of Sahih 195. So this person, he is like day and night working like a donkey. And when he comes to the bed, he is like what? Dead animal. Jiva. And anything that is to do with making him away from Allah, he learns it in the dunya. And anything to do with the Akhirah, getting closer, he doesn't want it. He doesn't listen to it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-fahish al-mutafahish." Allah is not the one who's got foul language in his mouth. Al-fahish, the person who let his tongue, we call him "sahb al-lisan al-tawil." Lisan al-tawil. His tongue is long. Call him "lisan al-tawil." His lung that means you involve yourself in saying words which is no good. Halak al-mutanatiyoon. Halak al-mutanatiyoon. Halak al-mutanatiyoon. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said three times. He said. They will be destroyed and do those are mutanatti'un. What is mutanatti'un? What are these mutanatti'un? And mutanatti'un is the one who, you know, the one who speak in a language which is above the level of people that to understand him. You need a dictionary in front of you. What did he say? Dictionary. What did he say? Dictionary. He's speaking a level not suitable to the people. An eloquent speaker. How eloquent? I didn't understand what he said. Mashallah. It's eloquent because you didn't understand what he said. Is that good? Yeah. 90% of the people can't even speak his English. Okay. But did you understand his English? Well, some of it. Is that right? Is that right? Partly when that's al talk to the people according to what they understand. It's not to do with choosing words which are not understandable. So Allah Azza through his Prophet said that he said, Inna Allah, Allah. He hates the one whose exaggeration in the eloquence of his. The one with his tongue moves it in just like the way the cow moves her tongue. I don't know if you see the cow that moves the tongue. A really long tongue it goes down and takes and it moves. So some of the people when they talk, you know, they talk this uh, posh accent in a way that you know, the tongue moves from one side of the tongue to the other side of the mouth. One side of the mouth. You see them, yeah? One side of the mouth to the other side of the mouth. And you just, you're listening, some of the words you understand, some of them you don't understand. And it's all of it as well, just about uh, making up high sentences. It's nothing to do with the, you know, the core of the whole subject. What are you, what are you after? It's just for you to listen to me. That's it. 
Okay, so the Prophet said, Allah, he hates that. Now, how to cure these quarrels and this anger? Number one is uh, prevention. Prevention, prevent yourself. Because prevention is better than cure. So, if you look at what is the trigger to you for this, kibr, prevent yourself from being arrogant, humble yourself, self esteem, you will think that you are the best, conceited. Treat yourself for this as well. Okay? Um, so, treat yourself if you are like this. Also, if you are angry, change your position. Stop saying and just go, let me go to the house and come back. Okay, just keep for a moment. Stop for a moment and then start calming down and then you start to rephrase your words. If you straight away did it, you might end up saying things that you regret for the rest of your life. Um, make isti'ana, a style of theology. Okay? So, the Prophet Sallam one day, he saw a man shouting at the man. So, Prophet of Allah said, Wallahi, if I know a word, if he said this person said it, it will remove that hatred and that rage on his Said so he said, if he just makes the ad. One person went to that person to tell him what the Prophet Muhammad said, he increased in what? So you make a I'm not gonna make a Allah. So you need to listen to the words of the Prophet. Because he's in the rage, I don't want to he doesn't accept me. When you are in rage and hatred and anger, you want to accept the haq. Nothing from that person. If he says if he says to you, Allah is above, no, he's not above. You know he's above. But because of this, I don't want to listen to anyone you say. Udu, make udu. They make udu, inshallah, will as well help such a person to calm down. Uh, remember what Allah will prepare for the person who suppresses his rage. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man kadama, man kadama, ghayra. He who suppresses a rage, wa qadiru ala an infidah. And he's able to fulfill his rage to beat that person up or to spit on him or to do, he's able to do that. But he has suppressed this. The resurrection, Allah will make an honor of him by calling him in front of everybody. All the people they will see him, Allah will call him. Come. Virgin of paradise. Whatever you like, take. Why? Because he suppressed his rage. Where he was able to fulfill it. By this, Alhamdulillah, we finish what we have planned to talk about. Inshallah, we have any questions in the next 10 minutes. Barakallahu feekum. We will take the questions and the answers. Um, Jazakallah khair. Tabakallahu. 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 Is the false testimony is the lying? No, lying is different from false testimony. False testimony, as I said, three conditions. Remember them. Number one, it is something in the past. Number two, it is to take something from somebody to make a claim for something which does not belong to you, or to give somebody to something which doesn't belong to him. So taking the due right of somebody else. Thirdly, it's a lie. It's not justly. If it was just, no problem. He made a testimony to make this laptop goes to the right person. Alhamdulillah, that's a good one. You remember we said about the namima. The namima is slandering. It's haram, except in, in what we said. It's, it's namima will be halal. If it is to do with uh, fixing things, like Abdullah ibn Masood, when we had heard this man saying about the Prophet that this division, this, you know, giving this and this, is not being seeking the pleasure of Allah. So he said, I'm going to tell the Prophet to Allah. And he told him, the Messenger of Allah, he was enraged. And then he remembered what happened to Musa. He said, well, Musa was harmed more than this, but he was passionate. So if you know that somebody is going to harm you, somebody is going to affect your family, going to do something to your family, no problem to go and tell the authority about that person. And that's called not namim. If I know a person who is going to do something that will jeopardize the fate of the Muslims, uh, do something like a, a terrorist act because he's enraged what is happening, you know, to put a bomb here or there, and if he doesn't want to listen to me, I'm going to go tell the authorities. And that's not called standard. This is, this, is, this is what you should do. Sometimes I must appoint to tell you. Because this person does it, 
They will forget about what everything happened in Palestine and they focus on that little bit. These are the Muslims, but they are Arabs. So we tell them it's not called Namima. So all of the intention Ikhwani is there. As for the, uh, the answer to the question, I would say Al Yamin al Lamus, not just simply lying. It's lying to take the due right of others intentionally. Now. Now. Tabla. Say earlier, taking something from a Muslim, even if it's more than like a suwa, you are. It would take you hell for an hour. Same for the disbeliever, right? So, is this also for the disbeliever? Well, all the hadith was made to be to the believer. It doesn't mean that I could do it for the disbeliever. So I could take his due right because of the disbeliever. No. This is what we call it in Arabic. It was said because of the majority of the deal that he should be doing, that is with the Muslims. But as for the non-Muslim, the Muslim has to be truthful and to prove that he's truthful. How are you going to make doubt to these people when you are a person unjust and taking the due right of theirs? How can people to listen to you? Muslims that embrace Islam in Indonesia because of their honesty and trustworthiness, but the traders that they had and their manners, when they fulfill their promises and they don't cheat and when they sell the goods, that's why the people they love what they're doing. Because they have self-consciousness, which is from Allah. Because of that, they embrace the Islam. So it doesn't mean that if I, you know, so only the hadith is about Muslim, no, any person. But a Muslim would be worse. Because if you do it to a Muslim, for you, the non Muslim is what? It's a joke. You do it every day. If you do it for a Muslim, you have no caring. You have no caring to anybody. No. You know, you mentioned um, some people are stubborn and arrogant. If you enjoin the good and forbid the evil with them, they get worse. So should you not do that? In any situation, if my fixing is going to flare the situation, don't do it. In any situation, if something that what you're going to do is going to be causing more evil, don't do it. So in your case, if you're going to do it, then let somebody else do it, not you, because maybe that person doesn't like, like to listen from you. As I said, sometimes because of the person, sometimes because of the time. Maybe he's not willing to listen to you right now. Maybe later on. Uh, inshallah, later on. Make dua. Allah making dua for that person. If Allah opens his heart, you know. Make dua. Maybe that person, you know, suddenly he would realize his mistake and come back even better than before. Allah defense. Faisal. Sheikh. Sheikh, I know you have um, covered this issue many times, but just to clarify, something came, at, came up at our masjid, a big discussion regarding the traveler. Does he have a choice to shorten the prayer or is it wajib for the traveler to shorten his prayer? Well, if the, the traveler is praying as an imam or is praying on his own, not praying behind somebody who is praying a residential prayer, he must pray the shortening. If he does not pray the shortening, some scholars, and rightly so, invalidates his prayer. His prayer is invalid. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, when he imposed the prayer, he imposed it in the short form. Meaning, the prayer was Turaqa Dhor, Turaqa Asar, and then Turaqa Isha. And of course, Maghrib and Fajr say the same. Then in the residential, Allah increased it too. So if you're praying while you are traveling, the prayer which is supposed to pray, the original prayer, not the one which has been increased because of the residential, you add it to it, it's like you're praying Dhuhr six rakah. Is it accepted to pray six rakah? No, not accepted to Praying Asr six rakah or five rakah, not accepted to If you pray it intentionally like this, not accepted. Same thing if you pray. The Asr, all the Dhuhr, all the Isha, not the original prayer of theirs, 
which is the two raka, two raka, two raka, and you add it even if four as a residential, and you're not behind an imam or resident, your prayer is invalid. And that's the opinion of our Sheikh Rabbanu Now, I don't take questions on the back. Somebody has to hear here, sitting here. I don't take questions on this is in the club, Shisha Bisha. Now, you have to be here. You have to be here. You can't be here. Well, the one I don't accept some questions. Now, can it be about, it has to be about the topic? No, no. Yeah. I don't you know, think. Recently, and uh, like some products, they've got like Christmas uh, things on them now. Like uh, images on them, like coffee and like bags. Are we going to buy these things or? Uh, some items they've got the Christmas. What is the Christmas sign? I don't understand. They've they got like Christmas designs on them now. How, how what is the Christmas design? You've got them there. Like in the coffee shops now, huh? they have the decorations if it does not represent a symbol of you know kufr and you need that stuff there's no problem yeah okay so let's just let's just make it even better eggs this yeah. chocolate eggs at the time of easter have you seen it yeah yeah right so the chocolate eggs am i allowed to <laughs> buy them to eat them Yes, but if I'm allowed to buy them to champion that, it's not allowed. So it depends on my intention. Okay. Now, your children have to be careful with them. And I know these eggs, they taste better than the ones which are not eggs. <laughs> they taste really nice. The cream which is inside them and the chocolate, they make them so nice. Yeah. yeah. And they go cheap after Easter because nobody's buying them. <laughs> There's one which is really even like this, big ones, huh? massive ones. Yeah. No problem to eat them as long as they're necessary. You're not with the intention encouraging such a thing. Okay. No. Oh. And you're not allowed to buy them to give them a gift to your neighbor in the, such occasions as well. No. What the fans travel? Sorry? What the fans travel? What the fans? What justifies in terms of traveling? What defines traveling? What defines traveling? Oh, this is the most controversial issue in the whole of maybe Islam. What defines a travel as a travel? It's not a distance, yeah, one. It is to do with intention. The distance is not because the Prophet of Allah, he made a journey, a travel in. in Three miles. Three miles. He made a journey travel. Three miles. It's not that much. So, according to, and if you look at all the hadith and the old uh, ayat of this, how the Prophet deals with it, the traveler is a person who did not, number one, intentionally wanted to reside in that area. Number two, the traveler, he is a person who does not uh, accommodate himself in a way that the resident will do. The traveler is a person who will do something which is normally he will not do if he's a resident. I'll give you an example. And this is a very good example to understand. It's nothing to do with the distance. A person, when he goes from A to B, if he does not do extra thing that he does not do it from A to C and A to D, he's not a trouble. But if he goes to A to B and then he does something extra from looking at his petrol gauge, making sure he's got enough petrol. It's an area which he needs. Number two, he tells his wife, you're not going to such a place. Look at the children. Uh, if in case you phone me, it's something. Number three, he's not staying there for a long time. He's not really willing to stay for it. He's not making a residential. Once he finishes what he's not going to do, he's going to come back. He does not stay in a flat where he's going to be buying utensils and bed and bed mattresses because he's going to get rid of them. He's too much. He wants to travel light. He wants to go to travel agent, all of us, and, and friend here, friend there. Okay? So he's traveling. So he does something with his extra, with his intention. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, if a person went to a place where it is 100% according to what the people say is a traveling place, but he did not intend traveling, he's not a traveler. And he gives an example like this. 
he, let's say he's a hunter, he hunts a rabbit. And the rabbit, you know, that time used to hunt it with what? With the arrows. So he got closer, maybe 50 meters, 100 yards, 200 yards, about to shoot it. Rabbit kept going. And he kept following it. Until he ended up, uh, let's say, from London into Birmingham, following that rabbit. He ended up in Birmingham. In Birmingham, if you try it, he's not a trouble. Because from the beginning, he did not intend to go to Birmingham. He intended to follow the, the rabbit. And he ended up in Birmingham. So he did not intend to travel. Okay? That's to show the long distance. And then he gives us an example of short distance. Let's say you've got a hotel in the outskirts of London, which is two miles, three miles away from here. And you have a conference. And you cannot see your family. You have to lock in there. You have to hand on your mobile and everything. And you're going to go there. You're going to get your suitcase. You've got some, you know, pyjama for you and different clothes for it. It's like a traveler. And it's only three miles. And you went there and you said to your wife, I'm going to go there for two, three days. It could be four days. A lot of island. Depends upon this very important conference. You've got to travel. Even though you're what? Next door. See, so this is to do with the intention of the person. Okay, Allah Ta'ala. But as I said, you have more than 22 sayings regarding what defines struggle. Pick and choose. <laughs> now, but Khalas, what is question now? Did you ask? Did you ask before? Hang on. Right, Fadariya Nazoji asked. Ahmed. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. What is the ruling on drinking while walking? No problem to drink if you need while you're walking. Unless, sorry, did you say drinking? No, no problem to eat while you're walking, not to drink. You caught me here. So drinking whether you're walking, are you sitting? Sorry, were you standing and stopping? It's not allowed until you sit down. So drinking when you're walking, you have to sit. As for the food, we say you have to sit unless you're walking. So if you're standing, sit. But if you're walking, because the companions walk with the Prophet of Allah while they were eating. Because of this, we exempted this from it. Fadariya Nayaz. Sheikh, does the same travel ruling apply to if you want to combine your prayers? Like, let's say, before a flight. Combining the prayer, of the, combining the prayer for travel, you mean? It's not yeah. him. It's it's him to decide whether he likes to do it or not. It's up to him. So it's left for his convenience. Shaman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shaman. Uh, my question was when it comes to the hadith. Is your name, by the way, Shaman? Are this pronounced? Yeah. Yes, yes, and I think the, the, the I, I think you. every time, every time me and you talk, you always mention to mention that my name. Okay, you, so they uh, make a joke of that name, yeah, because uh, Shaman for us is a funny name. I mean, we could call you yeah. Bakhti. I know my my name is a little bit. Every time, every time you see my name, I can't you know, hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, you can you hear my name? Can you hear me now? Yeah, but it's not really loud. Go on. Yeah, I just, my question was, when it comes to hastening to break your fast in Ramadan, does this also apply to any un, any other voluntary fasts that you do? I, I don't understand. Uh, again? If I do any sunnah fast, if do, do I also do, fast? do I hasten to break my fast like how it is in Ramadan? Hasten. Do I hasten what? Do I hasten to break my fast like as if it's in Ramadan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything to have. Every, whether the fasting is a fast, whether it's Ramadan, obligatory or not obligatory. Hastening the breaking of the fast. Did not Prophet did not say that uh, the fast, uh, the, uh, the when he said, Let us have the Ummah to be here, my Ajah of Fitra. My Ummah is upon good as long as they hasten the breaking of the fast. It doesn't mean only Ramadan. Any fast. Hasten the breaking of the fast. In any fast. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Fadl. When the Imam is saying the Quran, what do you say in the prayer? When the Imam says the Quran, what? If you say uh, that say, I mean, the Imam when he says the uh, Dua al-Qunut, yeah, any, any Dua which has got where the Imam says Allahumma, yes, he say Amin, Amin, Amin. Even if he doesn't ask, 
فور اكزامبل اللهم ادينا في من هديت وعافينا وتولانا في من تغفر انك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك انك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك ايفن يو سي ذات يو سي امين نو بروبلم يو سي امين ايفن يو از نوت اسكينج ان الدعاء سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك